Hello and welcome to Newsclick. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. I had the honor and the privilege to spend two hours with a person who is arguably India's greatest living film director. His name is Sham Benegal. I met him at his office in Tardeo in Mumbai. And instead of half an hour, which I thought I would get from him, he gave me two hours. So we are going to publish this interview in three segments. And the first segment is all about his 23rd feature film, which is going to be released very soon. It is a film called Mujib, The Making of a Nation. It's about Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, often considered by many to be the father of Bangladesh. It is Sham Benegal's first and so far only film made in the Bengali language. The film is not only Sham Benegal's first and so far only film made in the Bengali language. It is unique because it is a co-production of two government bodies. The government of India's NFDC or National Film Development Corporation and Bangladesh Film Development Corporation. The film is expected to be released across the world in 2023. Different subtitled versions of the film are going to be released across the world towards the end of 2023. Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. And I'm truly honored and privileged that I'm here in the office of India's greatest living filmmaker. I'm sitting in the Tardeo Mumbai office of Sham Benegal. Thank you so much, Mr. Benegal, for giving us your time. Or news click a darshak be a tenth hum garvid both karte hai ki aapka kimti samay aap hame diya. Aapka taviyat kaisa hai? Hum sun rahe ki you are having to go for dialysis. Aapka hapta mein do baar aapka dialysis ke liye aapko jana par rahe. To aapka taviyat ke baare mein aap bataiye. Kyunki aapka umar hai 88, you are 88, you are going to be 89. Yes. How is your health? Well, I would say middling. It's, uh, you know, at my age, I cannot complain about anything. It's, it's good that I can at least walk and stand and come to my office and do my regular work. Now, that's important. You know, for me, the most important thing is working. And that's the only thing that keeps me in good health. You know, if I had given up working, I mean, at my age, most people retire and disappear from the scene. But I decided that I wasn't going to do that. You know, there's no question of retirement. You know, retirement means goodbye, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And I don't, I'm not yet ready to say goodbye. That's very good. We are very, very honored and we are very, very happy that you're optimistic. Tell us a little bit about the current status of the film that you're making, which is a co-production of the government of India and the government of Bangladesh. And it is titled Mujib, The Making of a Nation. It has been several years since this being made and kindly, and I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first time that you're making a Bengali language feature film. I mean, you've been making films from the time you were 12 years old, I know, uh, using your father's camera. But uh, from 1974, you have been making feature films. And this is going to be your 23rd film and the first film in the Bangla language. I'm a Bengali, I'm a Manur, I'm a Muslim. One time, two times. Nishir Batash Kahar Hutash. But the new nation of Pakistan will have one national language. Urdu. Rasta Vasa Banglachan. Rasta Vasa Banglachan. I'm a Tumare, a Tafutur Ghartila. 
tell us about the current status of this film. Well, you know, it, I, I, I don't really <coughs> know Bengali. Uh, that, that's a bit of a disadvantage. But I had very good uh, people to help me. Because, you know, the, the, the most important thing was that the Bengali as spoken in Bangladesh is slightly different from the Bengali as spoken in West Bengal. You know, the, the, the accents are slightly different. Some of the expressions are slightly A different. Bangal Bhasha. Yeah, <laughs> quite right. Both my parents are from <laughs> yeah. East Bengal. But you know, one doesn't, in, if you say Bangal in West Bengal, it's seen as an insult, <laughs> you know. Because the, the fact is that, the, but as far as the Bangladeshis are concerned, the original Bengali is theirs. You know, West Bengal has a language that's got mixed up with several other languages, but they, they sort of uh, pride themselves on the purity of their language. You know, so, of course, for me, all this is uh, above me because I don't know Bengali. But what was interesting to me while making the film, since I chose to make it in Bengali, the reason being that Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, fought for a Bengali nation. You know, he, he the, it was East Pakistan. And uh, they, he, 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 among a whole lot of people, particularly the uh, intellectual community, was, uh, you know, there was a, there's a kind of a jackboot on top of them from uh, Pakistan, West Pakistan. And uh, they, they suffered a great deal on account of that. So you, these, are, these are people who, who rose against Pakistan. And then eventually, the, the Sheikh Mujib was a person among the people who said that we have to fight for a Bengali nation. In other words, would you agree with me when I said the birth of Bangladesh in 1971 conclusively, I wouldn't say conclusive, but indicated clearly that culture of which language is an integral part in more senses than one matters more than religion. It does actually. It does. It matters a lot because you see, one of the things is the Bengali person, person of Bengali background, who speaks Bengali, feels that he's heir to a very rich culture. But the language itself provides a very rich culture. And it's also, an, I, you know, you have a great number of people who contributed to, you know, because the 19, late 19th century, which really is, you might call, the modern age, as far as India is concerned also. You know, 1857 being a kind of break between the old feudal order and the changing order from then on. And uh, the people who created the Bengali nation see, see, I mean, saw themselves as heirs to this modernity. Because if you find that the first the first um, state, <clears throat> Bengal, is the first place where he, you had education in English as well. You know, in a, in a way that opened their windows to the West, in a way that the rest of India did not quite have that. So they were, they, they, they were part of a much larger culture, and um, the process of civilization, you know, the, ev the evolution of that civilization, it was much uh, more advanced, let us say, in terms of the world than a large part of India. And that was very important because, you see, in India, the rest of India, it really was only the South. Actually, because, you know, you had the 
Calcutta University was the first one among the universities. Then you have the Madras University. And after that, everybody else came later. So that in terms of education, you know, and also education that would be kind of the link to the rest of the world was much, much more advanced than any other part of India. Shamji, ये फिल्म काफी साल से बन रहे हैं। इसमें भारत सरकार का मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इनफॉरमेशन एंड ब्रॉडकास्टिंग, सूचना और प्रसारण मंत्रालय, बांग्लादेश सरकार है, आपका नेशनल फिल्म डेवलपमेंट कॉर्पोरेशन भी है, एनएफडीसी है। तो कहाँ कहाँ तक पहुँचा? ये आप शूटिंग किया ढाका में or in different places. So what is the current status of the production of the film? Because I was reading and I was told that by this time, the film was supposed to be ready and completed. So now tell me, where did this film come from? Well, you see, it was a force of circumstances. See, the pact between Narendra Modi and Sheikh Hasina was signed in 2019. You know, so you, you and then the four fact, years ago, four years back, four years back. But the fact was that it took time. You know how, who was going to share how much and so on and so forth, because you see the government of India, that is Narendra Modi said that uh, we would like to make a film about Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. And uh, then Sheikh Hasina said, see, uh, I mean, it's a wonderful idea. It's marvelous that you wish to do this. But I personally feel, being the daughter of Sheikh Mujib, you know, we, we should participate. You know, we should participate in the making of this film. So let it not just be a film that is being made by India for Bangladesh. Let it be a joint venture between Bangladesh and India, you know, together. So, we, so the contract that was signed was between the uh, Bangladesh Film Development Corporation and the National Film Development Corporation of ours. You know, so between the two of them, they put this project together. And another thing was that uh, Sheikh Hasina also said that, look, we, I think we should put a little more money than India. So you're saying Bangladesh is putting more money into the project yeah. than India? They, yeah, because you see, they, she said, look, I mean, it's a, it's a film about the father of our nation. You know, now like what happened when uh, we made a film on Gandhi in India. You know, because the uh, Attenborough wanted to, make, to, wanted to make a film, but Mrs. Gandhi at that time said, sorry, you make the film, but we pay, the, pay for it. <laughs> I, I'm going to come to that. I'm yeah. going to come to the other films you made on Gandhi, on Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, on, on uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. But before that, what is the current status of Mujib, the making of animation? What is the present status? The film is more or less ready. It is ready, but uh, it requires a few things. Like say, for instance, the film we shot was in Bengali. But India wanted, you know, in this BFDC and FDC thing, India wanted the film to be that we would be able to show the film all over the country, in our country. In which case, by having a film in Bangla, you, it, its reach becomes limited. So they said you should have a Hindi version as well. You know, and then in any case, Sheikh Hasina had said that you should have a version that can be shown abroad. So an international version. International film. Mainly because, you see, the Bangladeshis are all over the world now. And particularly in the Western world. And in the Western world also, in countries like Germany, France, 
Euro, Britain, Canada, US. Yeah, as so you have large numbers of Bangladeshis, and they, you see, unlike a lot of other people from the South Asia and the East Asia, they never lose their links with their home. You know that umbilical cord carry, is is un you know is uh, remains, and which is why she felt that it was important. All right. So, uh, Sheikh Hasina felt it was very important that the film should be shown to people, Bangladeshi people, in the rest of the world. So we felt that, yes, that, that's a good idea, actually. And then what we did was that we would have, you know, the one was to dub the film. But I, I stood firm. I said, no, no dubbing. So it's being subtitled. The, yeah. The reason for that being that, see, uh, Sheikh Mujib fought for Bengali and fought for a Bengali nation. You know, you cannot uh, tamper with that by uh, dubbing it in other languages. So we decided on subtitling the film. So, so currently it is being subtitled to Hindi and English. Uh, and English, but it will probably, depending on, you know, where people, where uh, you have a large congregation of uh, Bangladeshis. Now, you see, at the moment, it is capable of being shown in Canada because you have a very large Bangladeshi community there, starting all the way from the east to the west. So, today we are in Mumbai. This is the 1st of July 2023. When are you hopeful that this film would be uh, shown to the public well, at large? Well, you know, originally because of these, uh, because it was between two countries, there were many, uh, you know, bureaucratic hurdles to be uh, cleared. So it took a long time. In fact, the film was supposed to be ready and would have done some part of its run by now. So when are you hopeful it will be well, released we are hoping for... That we are hoping that, you see, there, there needs to be some occasion, you know, to, to open the film. March next year? Yeah, so one of, the, one of the things was to open the film in Toronto. You know, the, because uh, Sheikh Hasina was very, uh, you know, very interested in having the film shown at a, you know, international film festival, particularly in the countries where you have a large Bangladesh presence. So we did, I mean, we did do a few things, but even when it was not fully complete. For instance, we had a curtain raiser, you know, in the Toronto Film Festival. Although it was just a curtain raiser, but uh, it had excellent response. So now we will, you know, we can do uh, it you, with there, There's no date that's been fixed. What's this? No date has been fixed. No, 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 no date. We wanted to keep it on the, you know, the, the uh, I mean, the, the, she, I mean, Mujib, as you know, was assassinated one day before our Independence Day, you know, on 14th of August. So we thought that, uh, you know, the, it, but then it was, it was clashing with the India's Independence Day, you know, so we didn't want to do that. And uh, we wanted it absolutely clear of all of that, you know, so that politically speaking, we wouldn't do something that would be, that would affect them or affect us in any way, you know. All right. So it will, so it, obviously now it will be released either anywhere between September and uh, December. But the most important thing was that we, there were other th things that came in the way. Because, you know, you had um, Ramzan coming, which meant that uh, the month of Ramzan is very little is done in Bangladesh. You know, because they, they, they keep uh, 
those very, if you keep it very, uh, they're pretty orthodox like that. You know, you have uh, very, very few people, I mean, certainly uh, no Muslim will eat anything during the day. You know, so you have, a, it, it's not some a time when you can release the film. All right. We are not yet sure, but it's likely to happen within this calendar year. May I? Yeah, that right? it has to be. All right. Jamaade Proja Tonter Duita Alada Pradesh Hote Habe, Pushim Pakistan, Arpurbo Bangla. Gono Tontro Judi Pratishta Nahai, Rahule to Pakistan Take Shadin Havar Ru, I thank you. Rock to Jaman Diaji, Rock to Aro Devo, Editor Manuska Mukto Horet Havo in Chalma. Tell me a little bit about the film the actors and and what were the challenges you faced in the making of the film well the most important thing was the the question was of language since the film was going to be shot in bengali and since i couldn't i mean one of the things that was not acceptable easily acceptable let me put it that way was to take bengali actors from our country to make the film so I had to cast everybody from their side, from Bangladesh. Although the film was shot partly in Bangladesh and partly in Bombay, but we had to bring the whole lot of actors from there. You know, because uh, it, it mattered a great deal, because they're very particular about the, <laughs> the you know, accents and speech and all of that kind of thing. So I had to have actors from there. Fortunately for me, the actors from Bangladesh are outstanding. Who, who plays Mujibu? Arifin Shu, he's a, he truly is a brilliant actor. So most of the actors who, if they have to make a reasonable living, have to do a lot of theater. So he's a theater actor. Same thing with the, like in, in Calcutta actors also do the same. Mm -hmm. Because they can't make a living doing films. Mm -hmm. I got you. You know, so Arifin is a brilliant uh, actor, but he also acts a lot in, um, on stage and particularly all over, you know, between Dhaka, Chittagong, everywhere. So he's a, he, he, along with the other actors, Bangladeshi actors, they are acting in the theatre much of the time. All right, I got you. And... Do you have an actor playing Sheikh Hasina's role? Yeah, Sheikh Hasina, uh, well, Sheikh Hasina is also played, young Sheikh Hasina. And she is also one of that group of actors. I see. Along with Arifin. Okay. You know, the, the young Sheikh Hasina is in the film. You know, because, uh, I mean, he, he, he was assassinated in 1975, I think. Do you, do you also in the film talk about what happened after the assassination? No, after, you see, we, the film actually naturally will end when 14 people, 14 members of uh, Sheikh Mujib's film, including himself and his wife and a whole lot of relations were assassinated. Only the two daughters were not, that was only because they happened to be abroad at the time. You know, Helen and uh, Sheikh Hathira, these were the two who, who, who you know, survived. Was, yes. The massacre. Because the, 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 the whole, the plan was, the plan was to massacre the entire family. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask you a different question. You have made a film on Netaji Subhash Chandra yeah, Bose. Yeah. That was a film that you made in 2005. In 1996, you made a film on the Mahatma, the making of the Mahatma, Mahatma yeah. on Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. You have made a television serial on Jawaharlal Nehru's discovery yeah. of India, Bharat Ek Khoj. 1988. And also on Jawala Nehru himself. That's correct. That in, was a three-part three part, uh, film because, you know, it, it became a three-part film because it was meant for television. That's correct. And you have 
made not only biographies of people who were politically important and historically important, you've also made a film and you've also, you know, written a book on Satyajit Rai, yeah. with whom you have had a long association and you interviewed him over several years and you put it together. In what way was the making of this film, Mujib, the making of a nation, different from your experience in making films about Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, about Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru? Well, you know, there's, there's only one point to be made here, which is that you have to, you cannot deify the person, then you lose a lot of the person's characteristics, you know, the character also. Because human beings are not gods. You know, they have their flaws, but their flaws are outweighed by so many other things that they do, which helps people around them, you know, and also generations that come after them. Now, the fact is that this is, this is very important because for me, it, when, when, I'm, when I'm making a film about some great historical personality, then I have to remember that he is not simply to be deified. You want to portray a person not, as you say, deify that person, but as a human being with limitations. That's the main thing. A human being but there's always a plus factor, you know, that, that makes him, that makes him rise. Because there is a certain kind of uh, integrity, there's a certain kind of moral integrity there, you know, which is very important. Like when you look at Gandhi, when you, there are flaws in everybody, but the fact is, not, none of these people intentionally have done harm to anyone. You know, they're not like a whole lot of other people who are also leaders of their country. You know, so these are people who are untainted by that sort of thing. You just heard Sham Benegal discussing his yet to be released film called Mujib, The Making of a Nation. In the second part of this interview, Sham Benegal talks about his trilogy of films on Muslim women. We discuss politics. We discuss the Muslim question in Narendra Modi's India. Keep watching News Click subscribe to the channel and wait for the second part of this interview with India's greatest living filmmaker, Sham Benegal.